Every day, the shipment of medical radioisotopes by air transport is vital to global health care. Why is air transport so critical? This material is perishable. Timely delivery enables thousands of medical procedures to occur every day worldwide. Scanning the body for the spread of cancer, treating tumors, identifying infection, determining the existence of heart disease, and revealing brain disorders are among the many ways that medical radioisotopes are used to diagnose, prevent, and treat disease. Unfortunately, cancer rates are rising. More people are dying from cancer than HIV, AIDS, tuberculosis, and malaria combined. For children worldwide, cancer is the second highest cause of death for those between the ages of 1 and 14. Radiation therapy treats cancer and new targeted therapies deliver radiation directly to cancer cells from within the body. Medical innovation is depending on medical radioisotope technology. Well radiation is important for a variety of reasons. Um, in our department we use radiation for diagnosis of disease such as heart disease, uh, disease of the bones, just fractures and you know, tumors. Um, we also use radiation for therapy. There's a large population of thyroid cancer patients which we treat at this hospital, as well as uh, lymphoma patients, and there's research in terms of uh, treating other cancers as well. Every day worldwide, some 50,000 medical radioisotope procedures bring hope and care to people. Hazardous products are shipped daily by air transport. Less than 10% of all such shipments involve radioactive materials. Most of these are radiopharmaceuticals, often small quantities prepared for patients. But shipping radioactive material can generate many questions about radiation. Medical radioisotopes are not toxic. They cannot trigger a nuclear reaction. They are not flammable. The radiation emitted by these packages does not cause people or objects to become radioactive. Just as receiving a dental x-ray does not make a patient radioactive. As with any hazardous cargo, care is required when handling radioactive material. Small amounts of radiation are permitted to emit from packages. Strict rules dictate how much radiation can be emitted at certain distances and how such packages must be stored and shipped. Reducing the radiation exposure to the lowest achievable amount is the objective. There are different forms of radiation. Beta radiation can penetrate tissue by only millimeters in depth and is shielded by thin layers of metal or plastic. Gamma radiation is more penetrating. After all, it is used to create images of internal organs. It requires more robust shielding such as lead. Emissions from medical radioisotope packages, which emit both forms of radiation, are of little consequence to air travelers, largely because of effective packaging. For cargo handlers, the occupational dose limit can vary by country. It's generally no more than one millisievert per year. A sievert is a unit of measuring radiation dose, which is more often described as a millisievert, or in thousandths of a sievert. The health risk of handling or carrying medical radioisotopes is minimal. Still, putting risk into perspective is always reassuring. One U.S. study compares the average number of days of life expectancy lost because of the effects from certain health risks. Smoking increases the risk of losing an estimated six years of life. Being overweight affects the risk by an estimated two years. Consuming alcohol, one year. Receiving an occupational dose of radiation of 3 millisieverts a year increases the estimated risk by 15 days. Another perspective. Simply moving from Boston to Denver, for example, will increase a person's radiation exposure by approximately 1 millisievert over a year. Increases in elevation, exposure to cosmic radiation and different soils or rock types explain variations in sources of natural radiation. 
for cargo handlers to get the same increase in radiation exposure as moving from Boston to Denver, they would have to load over 1,100 average medical radioisotope packages over a full year. In medicine, patients are purposefully exposed to radiation. Steps are always taken to minimize unnecessary exposure to them and to healthcare workers. This approach applies broadly to anyone handling radioactive material. Well-established principles dictate how to safely handle radioactive packages and reduce unnecessary exposure. Minimizing the time spent near the material. Increasing the distance from the package. And placing appropriate shielding material between the source and the person. Robust packages and proper handling prevent such hazards from occurring and minimize any incident with radioactive material. Effective training is also critical for the safe transport of radioactive or any other hazardous material. Medical radioisotopes reveal health problems without resorting to invasive surgery. Images show abnormalities that other diagnostic tests can't. Disease can be identified before symptoms arise. How does it work? A radioisotope is a common element that is made radioactive. Radioactive material seeks to get back to its stable or non-radioactive form. In doing so, the radioisotope decays and releases energy in the form of ionizing radiation, very similar to X-rays. This energy is harnessed in many beneficial ways across society. When used in healthcare, this energy prevents, diagnoses, and treats disease. A radioisotope is produced in a nuclear reactor or a machine called a cyclotron. The radioisotope undergoes processing in order to be prepared as a radiopharmaceutical. Once ready for patient use, radioactive molecules are combined with a solution that targets a specific function or tissue in the body. Usually injected into the patient, only minute quantities of radioisotope are required. With the product decaying, the energy is measured by sensitive equipment, enabling physicians to diagnose the patient's condition. Every year, millions of diagnoses and therapies take place using medical radioisotopes that have been reliably shipped by air transport. Radioisotope packages must comply with international regulations. Designated regulators in each country are responsible for implementing these rules. Nearly 80% of medical radioisotopes are shipped in Type A packages and about 1% in Type B packages. The balance is shipped as accepted packages. These contain very small quantities of radioactive material and the potential radiological hazard of their contents is insignificant. These packages are not tested and have minimal marking and labeling requirements. Type A packages can hold one person's cancer treatment, or it can hold enough product for over a thousand diagnostic procedures. The amount of radioactivity being transported varies. These packages are designed and tested to maintain their integrity under a variety of transport conditions, such as mishandling during loading, being exposed to weather, or being struck by an object. Type A packaging is multi-layered. Each layer has its specific function. The vial's absorbent material can retain greater than twice the volume of the liquid inside. The vial's lead shield is for containment. Styrofoam or other cushioning material acts as a shock absorber and keeps the lead shield in place. All this is placed either in a fiberboard box or in a metal container for additional impact protection. Type B packages carry larger volumes of radioisotopes. Some packages can weigh thousands of kilos. A typical package for bulk medical radioisotopes weighs nearly 170 kilograms, yet it holds a single 150 millimeter vial of actual radioisotope solution, about half the size of a common soda can. This single shipment can supply enough material for about 13,000 patient diagnostic procedures. Type B packages are also multi-layered. For containment, the vial is placed in a leak-proof stainless steel container. The lead shield weighs up to 100 kilograms. 
The package consists of two stainless steel shells filled with foam or other material. Type B packaging is more robust and is designed and vigorously tested to protect against severe accidents without breach of its containment or an unacceptable increase in radiation levels. When shipping radioisotopes, virtually every aspect of the package, from design to daily use, is governed to protect handlers, carriers, passengers and medical personnel from the radiation emitted by its contents. The air transport of medical radioisotopes is essential because there are only a handful of producers of this raw material. Most countries are importers. Air transport is key to the global supply chain. Air transport is also vital because this product is highly perishable. It is continuously losing energy from radioactive decay, so its transport must be expedited. The time it takes for half of the radioactive substance to decay is known as its half-life. After one half-life, which could be just hours, the amount of activity is halved. After another half-life, the amount is halved again, leaving a quarter of the material's activity, and so on. It's like shipping a flashlight with the bulb turned on. The battery constantly drains away. Unlike a flashlight, however, the radioisotope's decay cannot be turned off. Unscheduled shipping delays can significantly impact product availability for medical procedures, or even render the product useless. In terms of uh, delivery, uh, there is a finite time between which you can produce the radioisotope or the radiopharmaceutical and use it. Most of the procedures done at the department are done with something called technetium, which is a six-hour half-life, which means you have to use it within, within pretty much six hours. So a delivery of this pharmaceutical in a timely fashion is, is quite important. Medical radioisotope shipments are truly a just-in-time process. Certain products must be produced, transported, and administered all within 24 hours. The shipper or consigner is responsible for ensuring the proper packaging and paperwork of medical radioisotope shipments. Complying with international and national air transport regulations, the documentation describes the type of package used and the amount of radioactive material being transported. The package must be appropriately marked, labeled and accompanied with complete and correct transport documents. Radiation levels on the surface of the package and at one meter from the surface must not exceed regulatory limits. The radiation reading at one meter from the package surface is called the transport index, or TI. The shipper establishes both the radiation level on the external package surface and the TI. With this information in hand, the shipper is responsible for determining the category of hazard label and indicating the TI on that label. The carrier's dangerous goods acceptance staff completes an acceptance checklist ensuring that the shipment meets all air transport requirements, and then visually inspects the packages for any damage or leakage. This is mandatory prior to loading any aircraft. Regulations and individual airline policy limit the total TI of all packages that can be transported. Airline personnel calculate this based on the number of packages, their activity, and the size and type of aircraft involved. To keep radiation exposure to passengers and crew as low as possible, packages are subject to separation distances based on their TIs. The regulations specify that packages should be loaded on the floor of the underfloor compartments or in the furthermost end of the main deck compartments and must be restrained to maintain minimum separation distances. Other loading precautions need consideration. For example, Animals are allowed to be carried on the same aircraft as medical radioisotopes, provided proper segregation requirements are met, such as not loading these items next to each other. Preventing a medical radioisotope from being carried because an animal is loaded can mean delays or cancellations of medical procedures. Both types of cargo can be safely accommodated. At the earliest opportunity prior to the aircraft's departure, Written information concerning the dangerous goods cargo to be carried is provided to the pilot in command. This also allows the pilot to visually inspect the dangerous goods cargo if required. 
Safety is not only vital to handlers and carriers, but also to the medical radioisotope industry itself. Ultimately, it is vital to patients. Full compliance with regulatory requirements by everyone involved in the supply chain ensures this cargo can move seamlessly and safely every step of the way. With the constant daily challenges of shipping by air, shippers and carriers must work closely together to facilitate the movement of this highly perishable, potentially life-saving cargo. Emergency procedures must be available wherever dangerous goods are handled. Incidents can occur, such as a package falling off a forklift or being damaged during loading. It's reassuring to know that medical radioisotope packaging and its layers of containment have been designed, tested and regulated to withstand a broad variety of incidents and accidents. Protective measures are required if the package's inner containment is ever damaged. The exemplary safety record from shipping hundreds of thousands of these packages globally every year attests to the effective and highly controlled shipping practices and procedures and to the quality of the packages being shipped. The daily shipment of medical radioisotopes depends on the dedication of people at every link in the transportation chain. This is what ensures the safe, secure, and expeditious shipment of medical radioisotopes. Every day, people throughout the air transport network are enabling physicians to diagnose and treat their patients. Every day, people are helping people worldwide. <laughs>